Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Mm -hmm. And man, have we got a hot show for you guys tonight. Yes. King Ezekiel from The Walking Dead. Yes, Cyborg from Teen Titans Go. Kari Payton's here, y'all. Let's, Let's get, get buzzed. Buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Okay guys, our guest is a stellar actor whose voice you know from shows like Teen Titans Go! and The Lion Guard and Young Justice. And you love watching him on camera rule as King Ezekiel in The Walking Dead on AMC. We're so happy to have him here. He is the fabulous Kari Payton. Welcome! And the crowd roars! Look at the crowd! Look at them! I, Look at them! They're on their feet! It's a beautiful crowd. It's a, it, it's, it's, a, it's a cute crowd. It's a very cute crowd, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hi, Kari. First of all, dude, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank and, you. And so you're very welcome. So. And I gotta say that, you know, being on one of the biggest shows on the freaking planet comes with being one of the busiest actors in the world. Yeah. And thank you so much for taking time yeah, away sure. and coming here and sharing well, with I'm us, Well, I'm so man. excited. I came here, I had no idea what I was coming to. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I, got a, I got a call from... Uh, from, from Jeff um, Zanini. We have yes. to thank Jeff Zanini of Celebrity Talent Booking Absolutely. for connecting us all. Thanks, Jeffo. Our illustrious uh, 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 agent asked me to um, come and do this thing, but I was uh, out of the country and I... And and I was just kind of in a whirlwind, and then I walked in, and I was like, where do I know this guy from? And it's Rock Sugar? Why did he just yeah, tell me it was Rock Sugar, man? Rock Sugar! Come on. I know. They have uh, just eliminated so many back and forth, so good. right? Good Lord. I was just, yeah, well, I, this was kind of actually cool because I realized, uh, you know, I couldn't mitigate my excitement. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, it's I just mean, all as soon as you found out about rock sugar, then you said, "Hey, do you have a cookie? I'm yeah. hungry." Yeah. A, a, yeah, a cookie always helps. Yeah. They, they gave me a really we good always cookie. Have it was snacks. a really good cookie. We, uh, we always uh, have you got snacks. compliments of uh, SBV. Mm -hmm. um, we got to take care. So of hey, that. let's get this thing started, man. Yeah. Um, I want to know, not them. Mm -hmm. I want to yeah. know, Stacey. How did you get the role as King Ezekiel on Walking Dead, man? I mean, because you didn't just wake up one morning or like, "Hey, here you go." I hear. You know, it's funny that, that you asked me that question because I... Uh, you never get asked that. I never get asked that question. No, but it's a long answer. You know, Give and us usually, a, the shorty long answer. Yeah, I don't, I don't have one. The truth <laughs> is, is, is it started when, when, um, when, when I, was, I was born, a poor black child in, in Augusta, Georgia. Georgia. You thought I was joking when I said I was going to start it that way, no, but it's not true. No. We're going like to ask you that anyway. The, the, um, it's like such a any full job, circle moment. It's so yeah, cool. Exactly. And, and like any job in, in, uh, in this town, it doesn't start with the audition that I got. The first time I auditioned for uh, the, the casting director for The, the Walking Dead was, was, um, was uh, in 2001. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and uh, I think maybe I'd I had maybe I don't think I got a pilot. I think I tested for a show. I think maybe I did a, a guest spot or two on on, on a show. But uh, but over like the course of fifteen years, I I had just uh, gone in and always been prepared. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, this was the first truly big job I'd ever gotten from them. But uh, but but the way and the way that I got that job is that. When I was 18, I decided I was going to get serious about, actually it was before that, I got serious about wanting to be an actor, and so I decided that I, I was going to audition for the best uh, colleges in, in uh, the country for theater, mm -hmm. and, um, and if I got in, that would mean that I'm not just some hack, that maybe yeah, I got a little got talent. talent. Yes. It's not just, you know, people in my hometown saying, you yeah. know what, I think you'd be real good on the Cosby show. You talk so good. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what, I bet you could be Theo Spring, and maybe, oh, oh you know what, that Tempest Blood so oh seems God. real cute. And, and so... <laughs> But that you know that's what people yeah, say, yeah. but I don't know if that's the truth. So right. I got into all of these colleges, and then I, I picked um, picked one that wouldn't you know totally bankrupt me yeah. and yeah. my family, and uh, and and I I started uh, doing theater I, in in Dallas, Texas, at uh, Southern Methodist University. Got out of school and was doing regional theater, and and um, did a bunch of Shakespeare and experimental theater. I uh, after a while I was like I can't play Mercutio anymore. <laughs> You know, or I'm gonna shoot myself in the yeah. face. So I decided to, you know, if I was gonna, you know, play uh, play the um, the second fiddle all the time, because that's what a black dude in 
Shakespeare in regional theater does. Mm. He plays the the best friend of the main dude. And I was like, but the tights are awesome. I was like, dude, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> so I, I loaded up the truck and moved to yeah. Beverly. And then um, and, to Beverly. and a couple of um, years after doing like commercials and guest spots, I uh, I started doing the the, the uh, voiceover. I, I got my first voiceover audition, which got me my first voiceover job. And um, and uh, so so my so my, that first audition actually got you your Cyborg first job. Cyborg was your Cyborg. first. Wow, first that's one. cool, man. Nice, and, uh, yeah, very and, solid. And during that time, I did nine failed pilots, mm. and. Uh, and and um, but but you know had a lot of uh, you know little little bits and pieces of, of things, little movies, little yeah. guest mm-hmm. stars, a lot of voiceover that you know and that that really kind of expanded my my creative vocabulary, I yeah. would say. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, and over the course of that time, about two and a half years ago, I. Uh, I got that 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 casting director that um that I had been going in to see for, for years for years, years yeah asked me to come in for this uh, to 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 do the Walking Dead. Now and, this was uh, already season what seven? So season did seven, he yeah. tell you what it was for? She, she? And, she? No, and uh, uh, well, yeah, they, they said it was for the Walking Dead. Okay. They tried to disguise it, but they disguised it horribly because <laughs> my character has a tiger. You know, right. it's like you know, so uh, you know the sides had a lion in it. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, hard yeah. to oh. figure out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so. Uh, so You're at so least smart. I knew what I was going in for. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I auditioned uh, uh, three days after I got the material. I um, I waited for three and a half weeks um, because uh, they said uh, they said they they liked what I did, but it was King Ezekiel, and they were gonna every black dude between the ages of thirty five <laughs> and fifty five. They, they were gonna, gonna see and probably yeah they yeah. were gonna and they did and they yeah. did yeah yeah for almost a month. Wow. Wow. Before they finally came back and said we couldn't find anybody else. We couldn't find anybody else. Yes, I'm sure that's exactly what happened. Because Walking Dead standards are so low. No, no. My point, my point being though, is that I I think they really like me. Absolutely. I mean, as far as like, you know. TV personalities are concerned. I'm nobody in particular, you know, and uh, I think they, they were just doing their due diligence. Yeah. Yeah. And they literally couldn't find anybody else. <laughs> so, so let me ask you something, man. Wally, which is good. Which is that means good. I'm the only one that who can means, do it. You know what? You didn't waste all your parents' money no, when you went to no. You put so, in your 10,000 hours. I'm very baby. proud. And my yes. dad's a doctor. You know, you yeah. know how hard it is to, to get a doctor. My, yeah. Please a doctor. Oh. And, I mean, yes. he was a chemistry major in, in college and became a, a you know a, a pediatrician. I said, you know, his firstborn son was like, Dad, I'm gonna be an actor. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He was like, uh, he's like, oh my god, oh my god. Uh, but you know what? Happened? He slowly grew to become my biggest, absolute biggest. Oh, good fan. for you, man. Yeah, yeah. That's well, so you're cool. You're a good son, so of um, course just really quickly, support you. When you were waiting those six <laughs> weeks to find out whether or not you got anything, were you going crazy, or did you just say whatever? Whatever no, happens, you know what? happens. There are there are just a couple of times in my career where I feel like yeah. I knew I had the job. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I started preparing for the job. My my character Ezekiel is based on a comic book, right? Yeah. And uh, and he's a little thicker than I am. I'm I'm I tend toward the skinny side. You're fit. Yeah, I'm a fit dude. Mm-hmm. But but uh, tend toward the skinny side. And and, uh, and he was he he was older than me um, by by maybe about ten years. And he was uh, and he was thicker than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I was like, well, why don't I um why don't I hit the job? Yeah. I've been hiking. I, I hike to stay. To stay fit, as yeah. you say, and I and I decided to uh, to hit the gym and hit the weights, and uh, and so I gained about ten pounds between that three and a half weeks because nice. I just had a feeling that they were gonna that they were gonna mm. do some, and uh, and they called and they said, "Could we get a picture of him? We, he seems a little thin." And, uh, Not and I was anymore. Like, and, and literally, they were like, "Could you wear a tight T-shirt?" And oh, I was like, yeah. "Hold, I just ripped that thing off." I was like. And I took pictures with my shirt off and sent no, it to him. No, you him. did not. I did. Nice. They called oh. the next day. You they know those the are on the day. internet somewhere. Oh, my somewhere. God. They are. They are. Man, so freaking I might freaking put them cool. on there. They- <laughs> Google and go to images and you'll find it. Absolutely. Coolest story ever. Love it. And a big, huge congratulations. Wow. The role you. is yours. You are him. And it's fantastic. For sure. Crazy. Long may he reign, man. Damn right. So I, I know that I know what you mean, that feeling when you just know that some, it's like, it's yeah, like and you don't get that very often because no. there's so many times that there is a um, there's somebody in the room. You could just 
look like the uncle they hated growing yeah. up. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. You can be a little too short or a little too tall, and and that's it. It's got nothing to do with you or your talent or what mm -hmm. you're bringing. You know, so there's so much that's out of your hands. And so most of the time, when I go in for an audition, I walk out and I, I just try not to think about it. Yeah. Uh, especially after you know being in LA for almost 20 years. Yeah. You know, and knowing that uh, that that's kind of the way it goes. Yeah. But um. What was it about this one that you said? This Something's... one, it was the material. There, there. Mm -hmm. uh, king Ezekiel is uh, well. There's the king version of him, yeah. and then there's the the uh, more relaxed uh, Zeke that right. I like to call him. Mm -hmm. uh, he, is, he goes into Zeke mode where he kind of uh, relaxes that Renaissance fair sort of. Is that know. in the mode that he's in right now? He's in Zeke mode. No, nah, I'd say he's still in King Ezekiel okay. mode. He, he's uh, he's uh, it's gonna take him a while to 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 totally turn that off. I think, right. but um, but but he'll consciously do that right with people that he trusts yeah and so and so um and so yeah yeah there were those two sides and you had to do both of those in the audition mm -hmm. you know and uh and it was one of those deals that after i, w I was working on, i was working on with my lovely wife right back there and uh and she uh she's she's like my my acting coach and and yeah. uh and um we we really delineated the two sides pr pretty well and i thought i thought maybe one, a person would be able to do one Maybe they'd be able to do the other, mm -hmm. but uh, I just felt like for 20 years I was weirdly qualified. Preparing. To, yeah. Yeah. You know, I did so much Shakespeare in my 20s, so much voiceover in my 30s. It was like all of that came together to make me prepared for this particular part. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, I was going to uh, ask you because yeah. between your Shakespeare training, your classical training, yeah. and then... In voiceover, sometimes you're doing scenes with yourself as sure. multiple characters. So do you feel like the convergence of those two things really helped you get into this, the the duality of this character? I think it, it helped me embrace my imagination in a, in, in, uh, in different there, ways. There you go, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause, because I, I think that, uh, that people um, make the mistake, especially in, in, in voiceover, of, of thinking that, well, I, I do a lot of voices, I do a lot of voices, but um, but uh, Andrea Romano once said, you know, mm -hmm. you can do all the voices if you want, if you can't act, you can't act. Yep. Period. And yeah. it's, and, and, um, and acting is about how you access your imagination, you know, how, how do you, how do you make it real for yourself in this very unreal environment you know and mm -hmm. a, a voice actor you know you've just got a mic stand maybe they show you a picture of your character right, right but right. you just got the microphone and the mic stand you got to make everything else up yep theater you know you've got there, there's an entire audience out there that you've got to remember but somehow forget about you know and mm -hmm. uh and uh remember that, that there is that fourth wall that that you gotta yeah, that you gotta brick up yep. while you play in this uh, this other space and uh and even in television you know there's a camera that's right there that mm -hmm. you gotta forget about you know there, there's a there's a dude holding a boom who smells awful and his, his <laughs> armpits right there I was just saying, the arms yeah. are always up. exactly like, the arms ah. are always up you know and you gotta you gotta be okay with roy <laughs> you gotta be all right with him and shout and out focus. to the boom dude Exactly. Mm. Shout out to the boom dudes. And, Sponsored uh, by exactly. Dove oh. deodorant. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was just about to say, we're going to send him some, <laughs> some Mitchum for Valentine's Day. Mitchum. Oh my God, man. It's strong. But, you know what I mean? You always have to uh, use your imagination in and tweak it in different yeah. ways. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate enough that when I when I started, when I... When I uh, uh, obviously, I was doing a lot of theater, but then when I came to LA, I started doing a lot of uh, TV and and, uh, and and film stuff, and then fell into the to the voiceover. And because I was I was uh, always kind of overlapping those styles, yeah. Yeah. it just it, it it helped me as far as um, my versatility is concerned. Not necessarily. Um, the vo versatility of my vo my voice of how it sounds, yeah. but of how I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and another um, uh, a great bit of advice uh, somebody gave me the the, the great Phil Lamar. Yeah. Uh, awesome dude. He he um, because I never thought of myself as full of voices, and uh, and sometimes I can't remember what show we were working on, and um, and I needed to play a little ancillary character, and uh, and I was like I don't know how to how to play this guy and he was like and he, he he just whispered to me he was he said uh it doesn't have to be a big change just make a little change and just commit to it you know and uh and and that really opened my mind that mm -hmm. that uh that i didn't have to be you know um 
uh, Rich Little or something, or, you right, know what I mean? Right, right. You want to do some voices for us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. An example? <laughs> right, right. I'm totally kidding. No, no, but, 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 uh, yeah. well, but the thing the is. Because the mic is so, I mean, it, it hears it, it hears everything. everything. Yeah. And, it, and it, uh, it actually helped me to be able to produce more than I thought I could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, uh, and, uh, and realize that I had more voices I- inside me than, than, I, yeah. than I realized. Yeah. You know, so, so it was, uh, and, and the way that I would go about my vocal process was, um, was thinking less about changing my voice and, and more about changing my attitude mm-hmm. and changing right. my, uh, changing the character. Yeah. Right, you know? right. Well, you're, you're so good at that. Yeah, man. the intention is and, everything. Yeah. yeah, and I have to, because you just said, you fell into voiceover. Yeah. So is that so literal? Did you just did you not was aspire? It, you, it was something you aspired to. You know, or not really? friends of mine told me for the longest. You know, you, you know, you should get into voiceover. You should get into voiceover. You voice have a nice voice, man. Exactly. And I and and I was I was like, well, I'd love to. I have no idea how to do that. Yeah. You know, I'd ask people. You know, you know, here and there. I mean, I always wanted to work and and uh, and and um, I, I I don't know how many times I I, I asked uh, um, different representation. And, uh, and they were always say, well, we don't know how you do that. We don't know how you do right. that either. Right, right. I was like, there's that agency over there. Could you, you talk to him? I was like, no, no. we don't talk to him. <laughs> it, it, was like this, it was like this thing that people are scared Secret to. Secret world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say that they, they'd say, um, well, you need to get a voiceover job. It was like, how do you do that? Well, you should probably get a voiceover agent. And it was like, well, how do you do that? Well, you need to get a voiceover job. So, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like this weird circle. And, um, and the way I fell into it was like... Uh, Young Frankenstein, you know, I happened to pick up the the candle and the and the and the, the bookcase swung open and I was like, oh crap. I'm in. And I yeah, yeah, yeah. I walked in. But it was just I had yeah. been working in this industry for for twelve years. Yeah. And uh and a friend of mine got me an audition. That wow. overnight success of twelve years. Thank yes. you, friend. Thank exactly. you, unnamed friend. Da- David Slack. David, David Slack. David Thank Slack. You, David. Very nice. Yes, uh, he he started off uh, as a as a um, as an assistant on uh, doing cartoons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, became a writer, and uh, and he was like, I think you'd be right for this cyborg thing, but I never asked anybody to audition. I don't want to get in trouble, but. Give me, literally, he said, give me your, give me your headshot and resume. Because, you know, huh? he had no, I didn't know, he didn't know. <laughs> and so we were, and we, we know in voiceover, you don't need a headshot and a resume. <laughs> we, you know, but, but, uh, but you know what? It, it got me an, an audition, and I walked mm-hmm. into the old Warner Brothers animation in, in yeah. Sherman Oaks Gallery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I walked in there, and I remember I saw there was Urkel, all the dudes from Living <laughs> Single. Uh, it was like every, every black dude from the 80s and 90s. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and I was like, well, I think I'm in the right place. Yeah. I gotta have a headshot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, I thought and uh, I thought to myself, well, hopefully they'll let me audition again. And I went yeah. in there and I had a ball. My imagination just exploded. All of a sudden, I could be anything. Wow. Yeah. Be a teenage kid yeah, with yeah. half robot body, and and sure. I went nuts and just had a ball. And um so and that, a couple it, of weeks yeah. later, uh, David said, I think you might have got it, dude. That's so cool. And I got it. Obviously, the second half of season eight of Walking Dead is just about to oh, come yeah. up, right? Oh, yeah, that whole thing. Um, do you guys shoot like way, way in advance? Or way, are- way, well, it feels way in advance, uh, but but uh, but it's not really. We we finish shooting in November. We start shooting in late April, okay. um, early May, and uh, and then we go to about um, about uh, late mid November. And, uh, so in between seasons, like how how much of a break do you get from we that? get uh, December, January, February, March. So three months, four months. Yeah. Yeah. Yummy! So you get to shoot in Georgia in the summertime. Oh lord! That's awesome. Oh lord! Oh, that's lord. all we need and to say. And that nice oh, jacket. I'm yeah. sure it's got air conditioning underneath. <sighs> it's so nasty. <laughs> it's so hot. You know what? But but uh, but I've been I've been lucky to have missed. Uh, I mean, there there have been some times that I've gotten woozy, and and yeah. uh, you yeah. know because, I mean, the wig is actually an incredible apparatus it it's, is. that breathes, especially mm. when I shave shave my head. That's I why wore I, mine today because mm. I thought you were gonna wear yours. Well, <laughs> you know, that's the thing people forget. It's not mine. Mm. Like, oh, you it's know, not yours. Oh no, no, it is property back. of AMC International, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 
woman. And uh, yeah, if uh, if I tried to walk out with that wig, oh, yeah. that'd be like four drones and like, you know, eight ninjas that would jump out and just... Witness protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's all about the wig. It's not about me. So, so while you're taking your time off and you're relaxing with your lovely wife and you're doing normal things, mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know, being cyborg and stuff like that, right? um, when you come back to shooting, is there like a psychological process that you need to go through to get you back into that... Ezekiel mode, or, or it's just, I, I, I boom, you're there. I wouldn't say so, no. I, I feel like um, with Ezekiel, kind of like in the audition, I felt like I knew this guy pretty well because uh, he's, a, he's this theatrical person yeah. who, um, who's, uh, who's putting on a show, putting on a front, you know, but it's, uh, it's with a purpose. Right. And, it's, and, it's, and his purpose is... Um, is as altruistic as as you could imagine. You know, he's not. He didn't become king to elevate himself. He he became king to uh, to protect his people. Exactly. And uh, and I feel like he's doing this to spread this light in this very dark circumstance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I feel like that's what I do. You know, in is your that, normal day. In, yeah. In, in, well, in yeah. my normal life, I yeah. I've I decided that I'm gonna try and do this entertainment acting thing and uh and you realize real quick that it's that that it's really hard that people tell you a no a lot more than they tell you yes that um that that uh that the grind of it can get you down yeah. unless you decide uh not to i um i always think of um uh oddly enough uh, this quote from Don King, because he said he said he, he would um, he would talk about being in the hope business. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in the hope business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and for him, I think he, what he was saying is, is that I lie to people, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, and <laughs> but uh, but I took that. I always kind of glommed on to it and um, and uh, thought of it as, you know, when people turn on their television, when they when they turn on their radio, when they when they go into a darkened theater, they're coming for something from us, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They come. They they they're looking for hope. They're looking to be not just entertained, but inspired and like moved forward. Absolutely, right? Yeah. So so, at the very least, I have to be hopeful in myself. You know, mm -hmm. I have to tell myself even on a bad day. You know the the good days are coming, and so and so. I always tell myself I'm in the hope business. You know. I'm in the motherfucking hope business, so I've got to stay hopeful. Yeah. If, if, and, and then, and then when people come to see me, then they can feel it off me. Totally. That they can totally. feed it off me. Totally. And so, and so, Ezekiel was a, a lot the same way. You know, is that he, he's um, he's walking through the apocalypse. You know, with this tiger. You know, thinking, man, I gotta somehow stay hopeful. The tiger helps. The tiger helps. The tiger helps. But sometimes I gotta stay hopeful, you. Yeah. right? <laughs> but people yeah. gravitate to a guy with a tiger, right? Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. And yeah. so he says, uh, the first thing you gotta say if you've got a, if, if you're a dude with a tiger is it's okay. Yeah. The first thing you gotta say is she's all right. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You come with me. We're gonna be okay. And uh, and and I think I, I honestly think he became king because he had a big voice. Yeah. And people were standing a hundred yards away, and he yeah. was like, "It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Come here." Yeah. They were like, "That guy's Come. always yelling like a king. Yeah. He's our king." Yeah, and it yeah. just it just yeah. worked. Yeah. yeah. It just worked. And so um and so I really do feel this affinity for the character. And going back, I'm literally from Georgia. Yeah. Yes. So yes. going back uh, to like Ezekiel, going back to the really going home. Yeah, yeah. Good. The going prodigal son comes home. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, what I you know when I was preparing to sit with you, which was a joy to to read more about you and your family, um, preparedness, passion for your craft seem to be really front and center when you approach your work. Yeah. And obviously, twenty plus years in the business, and you touched on it a little bit, but how? And for people that are watching, that are maybe hitting some kind of a plateau or mm -hmm. a low like how did you or any wisdom you can share about powering through when your phone isn't did blowing you read up a book? and you yeah. know. Did somebody give you something i did i always did something the thing is 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 that uh is that your creative process only stops if you allow it to mm -hmm. you know you're if, so if right if people man. are if, if if i wasn't working 
then I went and found work for myself. I always say, all I need is a job that feeds my belly and a job that feeds my soul. And if, the, if, if, uh, if it happens to be that I gotta get a job that's like nine to five and just feed, literally feeding my belly, then I go out and find the job that's gonna feed my soul. You know, yeah. uh, and so uh, and, and maybe I'm not getting paid for it for a while, May, you know, but but it's uh, but but if you're doing it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. you don't need to get paid for it because uh, bec because your passion yeah. for it is going to is going to feed you, uh, feed you enough. I'm lucky enough that that um, that, that eventually the belly and the soul jobs, you know, started to, to melt yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, but the yeah. truth is, is that I've been I've been fine. For a long time, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And people know who Ezekiel is, and they know who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, after after all of this time and all of this work. But what I realized when I finally made it, you know, was that was that uh, I've actually been cool. I'm, I, I've, I've been, my soul has been fed. Yeah, yeah. you know, my you, family is fed. My soul is fed, and I'm yeah. good. Yeah. About everything. It's you a know? powerful place. I think that mis you know that people get caught in the definition of success out there versus yeah. your own definition. Right, right. Which is, is really, I think it's powerful and it really is beautiful. Yeah. To it's hear also you say those that, like, moments were... of going down, mm. those those are where maybe you're gathering all those things that you need in order to do that thing, yeah. that yeah. next thing that, you, that you're supposed to do. You know, you when you talk about, you know, you, you feel like you're plateauing and uh, and it's like, it's like, how do you know that that's the plateau? How do you how do you how do you know that that's what's happening? You know how do you know that you're not at the base camp? You know, mm -hmm. ready to to finally climb the to the calm peak before the storm. Yeah. How do you yeah. not know that you need this time yeah. just to get it together? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know until after. We, it's, right, it's right. so much about By the how way, we think about. Yeah. I have yeah. your next job. I know what it's going to be. <laughs> Motivational <laughs> speaker. I'll tell you right now, dude. On a stage. People would be like, oh! <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll get that going too. Yeah. King Payton! Well, that concludes part one with Kari Payton. Let me tell you a little secret. You do not want to miss part two. No way. We will be back. And don't forget to keep up with all of us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And show us some love in the comments. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time.